All right, I'm just gonna make a quick video on how to adjust the six set screws for your Paul Reed Smith um, trim. And uh, I got this from another video, actually. I may post a link to the video or at least cite it, but there's a, there's a man's video out there that shows how to replace the Paul Reed Smith uh, trim with a man's trim. And to get the correct string uh, bridge screw height adjustment is a brilliant idea. So I'm, I'm copying that and I'm doing that to mine right now. Okay, so obviously to this point, um, well, it's not obvious yet, but I've taken the back off. But I also have already loosened up the um, strings. They're super loose. I don't want to take them all the way off because um, you see the headstock, but they're they're locked in there and snug. These strings aren't bad, and usually when I take them out and try to re-stick them, they'll break. I don't want that to happen. So I've loosened them up. They're super loose. And I know that they're that this trim's a little bit too... Um, too low because I get dinks throughout all of this neck. So when I'm playing throughout any of it, really through here, I get a dinky dink noise. And I should have recorded that noise before I made this video, but just. Okay, so I have some voice recordings that I used to record those dinks in um, prior. And uh, I'm just gonna, I don't know how to get these off and put them into a file or whatever for my phone. So I'm just gonna play them right here and you'll be able to hear at least what it sounds like. So let's put this in airplane mode. All right, so I'll play them in order and see if this sound fidelity is good enough where you can tell what those dinks sound like, but this is what it was doing prior. See, that's hitting an A and just letting it ring. So I'm not even, I'm holding those frets down. It's that high pitched dink. Listen, that one's really short. So all that, I'm actually right now at the uh, 12, 15, 17, 19th, it's past the 19th, completely gone at the 24th. contrast I'll play the D string hardly any A so that's a good example of what it sounds like when it's quote unquote dinking trust me it's dinked because this bridge is sitting a little too low now the depth of the bridge is just a hair low but what you need as a 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench. And the only reason I'm using this is because I measured it and it comes up on the flat side to be right at 2.5. So that's definitely close enough that you'll know, have you a 2.5 Allen. And the next step is to loosen the trim. So let me go ahead and pull that one off. Let me look here. I, may, I might need to take 
these screens off anyways. Shoot. Yeah. Well, let's just go ahead and do this. Because I don't need any, any of this pull. So, all right. Looks like it's going to be a string change going. That's okay. So in essence, when the bridge is down and flush, you want this 2.5 when it's on its flat. You want it to be just where the head's under there. This, they're too low. So that's why it's too close to the body and causing those dinks. So what I'm gonna do Here we go. See, now that fits right there. It was just a hair. I don't know how many turns it was, but I had this set up from a local. There we go. Local guy, and he's a good guy. He knows what he's doing. I think he just went by feel, and he knows that I like my action really low. But it was just too low. Now see, what happened is I'm tightening this one down and I can see the rear end starts to raise up. So look at that, it's tight enough to hold this in place. You don't want it that tight. You don't want the rear end to raise up at all. So I'm gonna back off. Now the rear end is flat, went back down and I can get that in there just very snug. And it didn't have to be the most precise thing on the planet, but it, it is important. So now that's in there. Now that's just that snug. I backed off a hair so that you could see the ass end of it raised just a tad. If I push down on it, I don't know if you can see it, but can you see this little motion happens if I if it's pushing too hard? So I'm backing off. It looks like one half of a turn. Yeah, it's like half of a turn and it's in there. And then I'm gonna come back until It resists and then backed off just a hair and the, the, the tail end goes back down. See, I want to get it under there though. This one gets under there. So this one's not quite, now it does. Yeah. Now it's in there, under. Just enough to snug it out, back off with just a notch. That's what's been causing my dinks all this time. I wish I'd have done this sooner. This one, yeah, I have to get in on this, this side. In there. Too much. Come off, just a scotch. Now, theoretically, that should be like a feeler gauge for the height on all of these, and it should be the same. Yeah. Let's try. 
kind of eyeballing it while it's in there. Now, you got to realize that these things, I don't know if you can see this. I'll bring it up here. I'll try to see it from this side. But each one of these screws in a Paul Reed Smith bridge have these little pivots in them. I'm trying to view it from this side and balance. Shoot. All right. So. All right. The screw heads have these grooves that are in there that you can see, and that's where that flat plate fits in those grooves. And this is why they say you do not want to adjust those when tension is on the guitar. Let me get that back. All right. Yeah, you don't want to adjust those when tension's on the guitar because since they're a weak point, since they go into that angle, they'll break. That's a weak point in that screw. This is also why you, you have to have the depth already pre-drilled for those holes because if you're sitting there trying to drill that down into the wood that weak point will snap so you'll put the you'll put the twist on this thing and twist it off so that's how to get the bridge now when the bridge comes up with strings on it it since those holes are there it fits into those holes those grooves and it floats on that so it won't, it won't go up and down with pressure and in fact, I wonder, let's put this under here. No, that's a little bit too, with it in place, if I use my, my millimeter, it's floating just at 2.5, 2, 2.75 is about where it's gonna be, which is perfect. That'll raise it up enough well, you really don't want to mess, this radius is almost, you don't need to do, you don't want to try it that way. I did try it that way, by the way. I kept raising these and tried to get them higher and higher, and it kept dinking throughout. I even loosened the truss rod and the neck, and I honestly think it's too loose. This ended up being the culprit. These six screws were not at the correct height. So now that they are, I think I'll have a much better time playing this thing and dink it up, so... Anyways, that's, that's pretty much the video. I'm going to put some new strings on here and uh, put those springs back on the back, and then it should be good, but that's, that's your hack. Get you a 2.5 millimeter Allen, stick it under the head while this is flush down against the body, and that'll bring it to your right height. All right, so now that I've done that, and I've got the strings back on it, and they're up to pitch, can see that this thing sits right at two millimeters. It's hard to tell because of the reflection, but you can see the long line that represents the five, and it's about two notches underneath it there. Yep, it's all good. Now we'll see how it plays for the dinks. I hope you found that video informative. Uh, my channel's starting to grow a little bit. I'm, I'm happy and thankful for that. We reached a thousand subscribers recently, which is a milestone for a YouTube creator because a thousand's when we became, were eligible to earn money through the little ads that play. So I'm very thankful to you guys. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoy the channel. I'll keep putting music related content that I, I think benefits people on here and the other weird stuff that I put on this channel. So thanks guys. Have a good day.